Today we're going to look at how to get a publisher and how to climb out of that slush pile. So I'm going to give you my five tips for submitting your work directly to a publisher. So stick around because by the end of this video you will know how to confidently send your work to publishers, how to increase your chances of getting your work read, getting out of that slush pile and getting noticed, and getting a favourable re response from the people you submit to. So let's have a look. Okay. Tip number one is do your research. Um, this is quite simple and it's easy to do and it's so worth doing. So tip number one, find yourself a directory of publishing houses. This could be something like uh, the Writers and Artists Yearbook. Um, there are lots of publications that deal with the same thing and they will list the names and contact details of the publishers and what they publish and this is crucial. It's no good sending your lovely young adult novel to a publishing house that doesn't publish young adult fiction. It's no good sending your work of fiction to a publishing house that doesn't publish anything but non-fiction. Um, you know, you really will save yourself a lot of time by identifying the publishing houses that publish your kind of books. And if you go into a bookshop, that's another way to do it. Um, look at the books that you enjoy, the book that's similar to the one that you're writing, see who publishes them, make a note of it. Um, and then of course there are the websites that you can go to once you've got the name of the publisher and find out what those publishing houses are looking for. Okay, so that's the number one tip, do your research. Number two tip is choose the right person. Choose the right person. It isn't always possible. Sometimes publishing houses will just insist that you send your submissions to info at or submissions at and you can't get around it. But if you look at their information, you should be able to find who is the commissioning editor for fiction, who is the head of new fiction or historical fiction or crime fiction or whatever it is you want to submit. Once you've got that name, the next thing you need to do is to check that your information is up to date. People move around in the publishing industry from one place to another, so it's perfectly all right to telephone. You only need to speak to the receptionist. You, you might find she's one of the junior editing staff members, if it's a small publishing house anyway. In either case, it's perfectly okay to ring and say, is Jane Smith still the editor for fiction? Or is Tom Evans still working there? Um, I'd like to send my work. It's not a secret, they'll be happy to tell you. And if it's that person's name is out of date, their details are, are incorrect, then they'll give you someone else and then you can address your work to them. So try and find a name um, that you can put on your submission, whether it's digital or print, okay? So that's tip number two. Tip number three is follow instructions. Once you've identified a publisher you want to submit your work to and you look on their website or their listing in a directory, you'll find they have specific instructions for um, receiving submitted work. Now we'll put to one side for a minute the companies that say they don't receive unsolicited submissions because we'll look at those in a different video, okay? But for now we'll look at the ones who are prepared to receive submissions from people perhaps who don't have agents or who send them in this instance without an agent. Look closely at those submissions and f guidelines and follow them. Um, you know, if they ask for a one-page synopsis, don't send them a three-page synopsis. If they ask for digital-only submission, don't send them a hard copy submission. It's not going to win you any friends. Um, they want to make sure that beyond your astounding talent and your beautiful manuscript, that you are actually an easy person to work with, that you are going to listen to them if they're going to bother to read your work. Um, you know, they have hundreds of submissions a week probably, and don't give them a reason to pass yours over. You know, if yours is the one that has the big flabby manuscript when they said we don't ex accept books that are over 100,000 words and you know yours is 130, don't submit it to them. Find another one or follow their guidelines. If they want a one-page synopsis and you think, well, I've got a three-page one, that'll do it. I can't get it all down into one page. Well, guess what? You need to go and try. It's a good exercise anyway. So follow instructions is tip number three. Tip number four, tip number four is be match ready. Get your manuscript in shape. Nobody wants to read something that is poorly laid out in a tiny, tiny font 
all squashed together with loads of typos and, and, and errors, you know, sort it out, double spacing, good size margins, make sure it's clearly legible. On top of that, don't send it in thinking, well, it's an early draft, you know, I need to work on that plot line a little bit, or I think we might need another character, but of course I'll be working with a lovely editor, so we will do that in a later draft. You get one chance with that editor, with that story. Don't blow it. Send in the best version of your story, even if you have to wait another two or three months to make sure you've got it right. Um, don't waste that opportunity. If you, if you finally do get your book, out of that slush pile to be read um, by following all these tips. You don't then want it to be a pain, you know, nobody wants to wade through something that's just physically difficult to look at. So get your manuscript in good shape and make sure it's the best version of your book that you can produce, so be match ready, okay? And then tip number five is really a list of don'ts, and this is don't be weird, okay? Don't be weird. Um, these are quite simple things not to do. You'd be surprised how many people do do them. So the first one is don't use a silly font. Um, resist the temptation because you're writing a fantasy novel to have a fantasy font. Don't think that just because you're writing something historical, you know, it will carry more historical weight if you use a gothic font. Just choose something simple. Sometimes in the submission guidelines, you'll actually be, be given a font to use for heaven's sake. Don't use a weird font. Don't include a gift with your submission. You wouldn't be the first. It's helped no one. Nobody's going to risk eating chocolates that have come in with a submission. Don't send a gift, okay? Just don't. It's just weird. Um, don't slag off, if I can use that expression, other publishers. Not a good idea. Don't say, well, I've sent this to five other publishers and they didn't see how wonderful it was, but I know you're better than them, so you're going to be able to see its shining brilliance and um, you'll want to, you know, snap up the opportunity to have my wonderful book. But those other publishers didn't know what they were talking about. First off, why does this publisher want to be number five on the list? Why didn't you send it to him first? He doesn't want to know that. Secondly, the thought that five other people have thought it was rubbish might just colour his opinion of the thing before he even starts. Thirdly, although it may seem huge to you, the publishing industry in any country is quite a small place. Everybody knows everybody. Some people are married to each other, other people share um, accommodation. Most people have worked in other people's publishing houses. Despite the stiff competition for your manuscript, a lot of them are friends and they all meet up at events and they all know each other. And if you start bad mouthing people, word gets around and it's not good, so don't do that, okay? And uh, don't beg, it's not attractive. You know, oh, uh, please read my manuscript. I know you're really busy, but I've been working on it for five years and it means such a lot to me and it would really, really, really be nice if you'd read it and I'd be so great. Ugh. Don't do that, don't beg, okay? Nobody's gonna read it. And the final don't is don't pester. Once you've sent it, go away and do something else. Start writing your next book. Draw up a list of more publishers for when those ones misguidedly send it back to you. Um, don't pester. If they say wait two months and then it's okay to email to see where it's got to, follow that guideline. If they say, please don't call the office, don't call the office. So don't pester, all right? So those are my best five tips for getting your manuscript out of the slush pile and I really think if you follow those you'll stand a chance at least of getting your work read, of getting it considered professionally and properly which is the big step to finding yourself a publisher. Okay so try those tips, let us know how you get on, don't forget to subscribe, share this information with other people you know it might just help them um, and as I say we'll look in more detail in other videos at how to Maybe submit to publishers who say they don't take any unsolicited submissions, if I can even say it. Um, we'll look at what the difference is when, you're, when you submit to an agent. How does that differ from submitting to a publisher? So we'll be looking at more videos um, covering those aspects. But for now, good luck with your writing.